2014 marks the 35th anniversary of Ridley Scott's world-renowned film Alien. It's lauded for being one of the greatest science fiction films of all time. It's spun off its own successful movie franchise, which admittedly has fallen from grace, but it's also seen its share of comic books, novels, toys, and of course, video games. But Alien franchise games never seemed to get the feel of the source material quite right. Gamers were hoping that last year's Aliens Colonial Marines would set things on the right path for the franchise, but of course it turned out to be a horrible, horrible mess. Many fans pointed their fingers at Sega to blame for the game's shortcomings. But Sega has published yet another Alien game this year, Alien Isolation, this time being developed by the Creative Assembly, who are also coming off of the critical and fan-loathed Rome 2. Up until release, things were looking a bit grim. I'm happy to say that Alien Isolation is a wonderful game that remains fairly faithful to the original film's universe, and I'd venture as far to say that it expands upon the Alien franchise in a way that even the films have failed to do. Gamers take on the role of Amanda Ripley, daughter of Ellen Ripley, as she seeks to discover the truth of her mother's disappearance. Amanda travels to the distant space station Sevastopol after receiving a report that someone on the station was in possession of the Nostromo's flight recorder. Upon Ripley's arrival, it becomes evident that the station is in disarray, and society has broken down completely. The cause? Communications have been shut down, supplies are running out, and an alien xenomorph is on the loose, picking people off one by one. Isolation, unlike last year's Colonial Marines, is not an action game. It's a stealth game with heavy emphasis on horror, meaning it can be pretty stressful and some players may only be able to sit down and play for short chunks at a time. Players need to hide from humans, who are not keen on strangers encroaching on their territory, from murderous synthetic humans, called Working Joes, and of course, from the alien itself. Humans, being the most delicate of the three, can be killed with firearms, melee attacks, and just about anything deadly looking you can find. Synthetics, on the other hand, can take quite a beating before being knocked out of commission, spraying their Elmer's glue white internal fluids everywhere. The alien is invincible. It can be scared away with fire, but when players see it, their best defense is to find a good hiding spot and lay low until it goes back into the ceiling or the vents. Players can craft all sorts of useful items like first aid kits, IEDs, and various other self-defense gizmos using ingredients found in the environment. There are weapons like a pistol, a shotgun, and a flamethrower that can be found, which creates some absolutely amazing fire effects, but generally they're used for last resort scenarios because ammunition is pretty scarce. The story for Isolation isn't bad. It predictably falls on the evil mega corporation trope that science fiction often relies upon, but it's not disappointing. The acting, on the other hand, falls flat in vocal delivery and in visual syncing. But the story itself constantly sends Ripley in a downward entropic spiral. Bad becomes worse, which turns into a calamity, evolving into a fiasco, into a full blown catastrophe. What moments of reprieve are given to players are definitely appreciated. The game's design is top-notch. The interior of Sevastopol is modeled after the Nostromo, seen in the original film, which will make fans of the series go wild. The brown leathers, the incandescent illuminated large buttons, cathode ray tube terminals, the narrow steel corridors, and everything either runs on misty hydraulics or is operated by large levers and cranks. It's the lived-in future that many of us who grew up watching the Alien films thought was going to be a reality. Sevastopol, like Rapture from Bioshock, has the most character in the entire experience. It is a joy to explore its hallways and service areas, sifting through the traces of its recently exiled or exterminated populace. There are a few friendly survivors within the station who share a bit about themselves and their recent experiences, but more often than not, they quickly turn into alien chow. Most exposition is extracted from work terminals and hidden audio diaries. It's a super immersive experience, worthy of being played in the dark with headphones on. 
But many people are wondering if isolation is scary. The answer is yes and no. Initially, all encounters with humans, androids, and the alien are quite frightening, but simple overexposure to all of them turn them from a source of fear to being mere obstacles keeping you from your goal. That being said, when the alien is actively hunting you, and it is almost always actively hunting you, it can still snatch even the most cautious gamer from a vent, or it could be standing still behind a closed door waiting for you to come through, which made me jump in my chair even after putting a dozen or so hours into the game. Isolation does not hold the player's hands. It gives a small handful of tips, but understanding the distraction and the stealth system is entirely up to the player. I died and died and died and died and died, but each death was a lesson learned. And by the end, I felt fairly competent in how to handle myself properly when the Xenomorph was around. For example, players can hear when the alien is clunking around above them in the ship and can use the motion tracker to give away its relative location. However, the motion tracker emits a beeping sound, which the alien can hear and is drawn to. So it's a damned if you do and damned if you don't scenario. I know, why can't she just disable the audio on her device or turn the volume down, right? I suppose I'll just have to suspend disbelief for a moment in a video game about an alien hunting me on a space station in the far reaches of the universe. I found that quickly flashing my motion tracker and using it as a compass, pointing me in the correct direction of my next objective to be more effective. To pinpoint the alien, I'd rely more on audio cues. The audio, aside from the voice acting, thankfully is fantastic. But the game's initial learning curve is steep, especially around the first time players encounter hostile humans. Saving is done manually at designated save points, which at first I hated but thinking back, I quite like it because saving the game was a mini victory in itself, and it left me vulnerable while I did it. But there were periods when I lost up to 40 minutes of what I considered to be progress because I couldn't hide well enough. It's a brutal experience, and like the Demon Souls Dark Souls franchise, players simply need to accept the fact that they're going to die, and sometimes there's nothing that can be done about it. I will say that I wish the pacing was handled a bit differently, and along with it, perhaps a few of the alien's behaviors as well. When it's actively hunting you, it can sometimes lumber around, stomping its feet like the Frankenstein monster in your presence for several minutes at a time. What made films like Jaws and Alien, and video games like Amnesia so terrifying wasn't from seeing the monsters, it was not seeing them. Anticipation is killer. It took me 20 hours to complete Alien Isolation on the hardest setting, and looking back over my time spent with the game, I can say it's well worth the asking price, especially if you're a fan of the franchise. As a stealth fan, I'm looking forward to going back and completing a no-kill run. Even if you're not a diehard fan, it's still a great sci-fi horror experience, and one of the finest single-player games of the year despite some of its flaws. I felt drained emotionally when I saw the final credits scroll. Isolation let me live a few alien moments that I only dreamt about doing since I was a child, though for spoiler's sake, I won't show them here. There's clearly some heavy inspirations from Bioshock and Amnesia The Dark Descent, but those are definitely good places from which to draw inspiration. Alien success gave way to so many video game greats like Contra, Metroid, Halo, Half-Life, and more. It's good to see the franchise has landed a worthwhile video game of its own that stays truthful to the source material and lets players submerge themselves in its lore. This video was made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon.